Howling Static here with an update on the IWI Jericho 941 full-size 45 caliber steel frame model, 400 rounds through the pistol. Uh, KBI, the company that imported these pistols from Israel into the United States, went out of business in January 2010. And if you need a holster, Zahal.org um, can supply you. Uh, if you want more information on that, check out Ruger 6's uh, videos on the Jericho. He talks about Zahal uh, and some of your options. I said in my review that I considered a pistol to be reliable if it could go through 300 rounds without any kind of failure. Um, sure enough, the uh, it pulled through. Uh, I was able to get through 300 rounds without any kind of problems at all. Uh, however, it jammed on round 302, uh, which caused me some irritation and uh, also made me laugh. I field stripped the pistol um, and I looked inside and the feed ramp was caked in fouling. Um, it was so thick you could almost dip a quill into it and, and use it like ink to write with. Um, so I took some hoppies and cleaned it out. Thick black sludge came out of the barrel and uh, a bunch of the parts inside were, were covered in fouling and, and so forth. Um, I suspect it'll it'll shoot fine now, but I was surprised by the amount of fouling. I think partially because I'm used to 9mm pistols, which by virtue of just having less powder in them, uh, probably don't foul as much. So you're going to want to keep this pistol clean. I don't. You shouldn't go 300 rounds without cleaning your pistol anyway. Um, but um, just FYI, if you have this pistol, uh, you definitely want to clean it on a fairly regular basis. Um, after every session is probably good, uh, unless your sessions last more than 300 rounds. Um, by the time I, I get through 300 rounds with this pistol, I think my, my arm would fall off. So, uh, anyway, take that for what it's worth. Uh, another thing that has changed about this pistol is it has loosened up dramatically. I used to have to uh, slam the magazine into the pistol, which would cause the slide stop to fail. So if the slide was locked back, I would slam in the magazine, and the slide would just shoot forward, which was kind of annoying, not a showstopper. Uh, not an issue anymore. I can gently push the magazine in and it clicks into place. Uh, the slide is easier to work. I can get 10 rounds into the magazine now. I couldn't in the beginning. The, the spring was too stiff. So everything is loosened up and uh, it, it's uh, much more of a pleasure now uh, to work. And of course it still feels great in the hand. Um, that really is uh, the selling point of this pistol. Um, so uh, I like it. Probably will not sell this pistol ever. Um, like it a lot, have shot it out in the desert, have shot it down in an indoor range here in Tucson, uh, Marksman 2, which is on the west side of town near the highway. Uh, and the other great thing about it is I am more accurate with this pistol than any other pistol I own, and I think that's largely because of the weight. I mean, I don't really believe that uh, pistols are inherently more accurate than any other pistol. But for me personally, subjectively, I can shoot this better than anything else. Uh, I was really pleased with my results. Um, and as such, I, I have a really great time with it. This is my first choice. If I'm going down in the range, this is my first choice of what to shoot. Uh, so anyway, that's that. So 300 rounds, it is a reliable pistol, and it eats pretty much any kind of ammunition you feed it. I've gone through maybe four or five different kinds, uh, and I've had no problem. So I've even mixed them in the magazine. I tried the limp wristing test when I was out in the desert. Um, no problems with limp wristing. It's just completely reliable all the way through. So if you can, if you were concerned about that, um, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's a completely reliable pistol, and uh, you know I, I would use it for home defense, uh, no problem. Uh, another question people asked in the comment section was about scratching. They, um, some people had asked whether or not it scratches easy because it has sort of an unusual matte black finish. Um, there are several times I brought it home where I have seen scratches on it, or thought I saw scratches on it. Uh, and when I cleaned it up, I realized they weren't scratches at all. Something had rubbed against it, and like pl maybe plastic in the carrying case, uh, and left what I thought were scratches, but just cleaned right off. So I've, you know, I've had this out in the desert. I've had it banging around in my truck. I've had it down the range, and there's no, there's no scratches on it that I can see. So uh, I have no problem with the finish. Uh, don't let that stop you. I don't know much about the other finishes, but this matte black finish uh, is pretty cool. And also, I think this looks cooler. I think that the, the pistol looks kind of strange with its, uh, 
with the plain steel finish, but that's just my opinion. Some people don't like the rail. I like the rail because, I mean, for me, what I like about this gun is the sort of factory-made industrial uh, feel to it, heavy-duty feel to it. So I think the rail adds to that a bit. So I can get 10 rounds plus one in here, uh, which gives it a pretty decent capacity for a 45 caliber anyway. And it can be carried around in the shoulder holster. I have a generic shoulder holster, a cheap one. I bought it at a gun show a few years ago. Didn't have much use for it. Uh, now I do. Um, I can carry this concealed if I want to. Wouldn't try to carry it on my belt because of the weight. Uh, you might have a different experience with that. Uh, but I don't like having a lot of weight on my belt. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a separate video about carry systems uh, for heavy weight. There is a way of doing it if you pair parry suspenders with a, a, a gun belt. I'll, I'll do another video on that. Um, so that's that. Uh, still has my strong recommendation if you can find it. I don't know who's going to be importing it from here on. Um, KBI, as I said, is out of business, so I don't know, maybe Magnum Research will get back into it. it it's not clear yet. Uh, but we'll find out in coming months. Uh, there's still stock around, so if you go on to Gun Broker, uh, you may want to pick it up now because it may be a couple months before any more of these come into the country from Israel. So um, get on Gun Broker and look around. Get down. Uh, I got this at, a, at a, a gun show here in Tucson, so maybe you'll, you'll have luck at a, at a gun show. Um, my next question is, uh, what should I get next? I'm going to be saving probably from 1000 to $1,300. Uh, I'm about halfway there, um, and I had a couple of options I was considering, and I wanted to get your opinion. I'm happy with my carry pistol. I have a Glock 26. I carry in a Comtac Minotaur, Minotaur holster. Uh, love it. Uh, I'm going to do a review on the Minotaur holster as well. Um, um, so I want to thank Guarguar, actually. He, he recommended it, and uh, or he did a review on it, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, great holster. Can't recommend it enough. Conceals great, and uh, in terms of how it feels... Uh, take a, a hand towel and shove it down uh, the back of your pants. That's pretty much what it feels like. You know it's there, but it's soft. It's not at all uncomfortable. It's a great holster. So that's my system right now. So I'm kind of done with small pistols. I also have a Ruger LCP um, and uh, a DeSantis Nemesis holster to carry that around in. So um, I'm kind of done with that. I'm looking for something larger. Was my first option I was considering was an HK or a SIG pistol. I wanted to sort of step up um, one level uh, from Glock. I was looking possibly at pistols in 40 caliber because 40 caliber ammunition seems to be in good supply here as opposed to other calibers. Uh, I'm not sure which HK or SIG, uh, but I am looking at, at them. Uh, I am not yet convinced HK or SIG gives considerable value over a Glock. Um, you know, they're hundreds of dollars more. Um, they look cooler than a Glock. There's no question that, that they, they look cooler. Do they give you hundreds of dollars more value? I don't know. But I am considering it. I do like them, and people have a lot of good stuff to say about them. So that, that was the first thing I was considering. Uh, I was also considering a Smith & Wesson 686 revolver, because I don't have a revolver, and I've rented 686s, and I really enjoy shooting them. Third option, I don't have a black rifle. I don't have any kind of black rifle. I've never even shot a black rifle. Um, so considering an AR-15 or an AK-47 or um, some alternative in that category. Also considering possibly a Ruger Mini-14. Uh, I have three Ruger guns right now. I have a 1022 rifle, um, a Ruger P-89, which is my home defense gun. It's right next to my bed. And I have the little LCP, which I also like. I was really surprised by that. Maybe I'll do a review on that. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm open to suggestions uh, if, if, you know, people think that's what I should get next. And if you do recommend an AR-15 or an AK-47, tell me why and, and give me specifics. Give me brands. I don't want to build one custom for my first rifle. I might do that down the road. I want to buy a fully assembled rifle with a warranty. Uh, so if you can recommend some brands in that price range, $1,000, $1,300, I would appreciate it. The other thing I'm considering is a mid-grade 1911. Uh, like a Springfield or a Kimber, um, nothing like a Nighthawk Custom or anything. Um, with all of these pistols, my main concern is reliability. Uh, reliability is just, when a gun is not reliable, it, just, it ruins it. I don't care what other, other virtues it has. Uh, and I would rather have high-quality parts and put my money into high-quality parts than have a lot of bells and whistles. So, you know, uh, I could do without bells and whistles. I could do without accessories, um, you know, except for the essentials. I, I would rather put money into reliable parts. So that's my criteria. Please give me your suggestions. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, once more, I'll recommend Ruger 6's channel. Uh, most of you are probably already subscribed. He's done a lot on the Jericho. Um, and if you're considering a Jericho, you should definitely watch his videos.